Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Tax Support channel. Today, in this video, I am going to reveal the first loop of Oracle Integration 3. How the Oracle Integration 3 looks like. What are the things that has been changed from Oracle Integration 2 to Oracle Integration 3? All the things I'm going to discuss in this video. Please watch this video till the end to get to know all the things that has been revealed in the Oracle Integration 3. So guys, before I start, I will request everybody to subscribe to my channel to get regular updates. With that, let's get started and see the first look of Oracle integration three. So with that, let's begin and let me show you how Oracle integration three looks like. Here is the first look of your Oracle integration. So when you log in in your Oracle integration version three, this is how your home page looks like. You see here the URL. When you log in into Oracle integration page, you give a runtime URL. As soon as you log in, it changes the URL into the design time. Let me show you the URL that is there when you create a Oracle integration. Three. So this is how your runtime URL looks like. The instance name, the random string, the reason integration dot me. Sorry, this is the reason dot OCP dot Oracle cloud dot com. So when you enter this URL, you will be landed into the login page. And as soon as you log in, your URL from this to this will be changed. So you can see. This is my runtime URL, OIC Gen 3 hyphen this hyphen DX. And this will be changed to design.integration.reason.ocp.oraclecloud.com. And here there's a parameter called integration instance, which will tell you on which integration instance you wanted to log in. That is called your design time URL. So that is the main difference between Gen 2 and Gen 3. It has two URLs, runtime and design time. So if you want to call any API that you have created, you have to use the runtime URL, not the design time. So on this page, you see from here, you can directly create your integration using that create integration button. When you click on a create integration, you will be landed onto the integration page from where you can create your integration. Go back. And here you see pick a recipe accelerator. Now here is the filter using which you can filter all your recipes adapter wise. For example, you wanted to look at all the recipes which uses the Oracle ERP cloud adapter. So you click here and your recipes will be filtered out. And now if you want to use the in recipes, which uses the LinkedIn adapter, you click here and you can see the list of recipes, which uses the LinkedIn adapter. So this is the home page, which has been changed significantly. Also, if you click here, you click on this about. Here is the version. It was there earlier also. Service instance was there. Identity domain was there. Service type was there. And this is the new feature, outbound IP, which has been added. This will, this is the outbound IP of your integration instance. For example, if you want to whitelist the integration IP to the third party application. In earlier cases, you had to raise 
the support ticket to get that outbound IP. Now from here, you can get the outbound IP directly without raising a service request and give it to your third party owners to whitelist the integration IP. Click on this hamburger menu and here you see the design inside observability settings. Earlier, this used to be integration. Now, this has been renamed from integrations to design. If you click on this design, you will see all the options that were available earlier. But all the user interface is based on the Redwood theme. Now, you click on an integration, you can see various filters here which were available earlier as well and here also are there. Click on a create button to create a new integration. But in Gen 3, you have only two patterns. One is called app driven and second is called schedule. You click and click on a create button. You need to give a name, let's say test. Okay and you choose a package description every all the options were available in gen 2 and all these options are available here as well click on a create button when you click on a create button you will be landed onto the integration canvas from where you can create your integration and here you can create a connection directly from here this option was not there but now you can add a new connection by clicking on this plus button where you select the adapter, for example, rest and select the role, let's say involve, let's say test connection and simply say create. And you create, your connection has been created. You will be landed onto the connections page, test it and save it and come back. Now here you again are on the uh, on this integration canvas and you drag and drop. So when you drag and drop earlier, it is used to open a uh, uh, it is used to open uh, uh, the pop up. Now here we don't have a pop up. This will open from the right side and where you can give everything. Let's say get started select next and let's say add a review parameter here let's say grid and you click configure this endpoint to receive the response next specify the query parameter you add it give a name let's say name and choose a type let's say a string and then next, define the response here. JSON sample, let's say in line, let's say response. Okay. And then next, and then done. Now, here, this has been created, and you have this mod here. Now, you can edit your mapper, edit loading mapper. This is how your mapper looks like. You click here and you see what happened. Let me save it. Add it. And you see the wrapper and query parameter. Let's put it like this. Validate your mapper, come back. And now if you would like to add the identifier, click here. Earlier it is used to open a dialog box. Here we don't have a dialog box. Let's expand it and put it here. Save. And you see how quickly you are able to design your integration. Come back. That's it. And now you would like to activate, click on this activate button. And here this time we have three options, production, audit and debug. Let's say audit and activate. When you activate your integration, it will go for our activation, refresh it. And once it is available, it will be activated. 
But in meanwhile, let me go to the connections page. This is how your connection looks like. You click on a create button, a drawer will be open from where you choose your adapter and create a connection like we did earlier. This is how your lookups page looks like. This is how your library looks like. This is how your package page looks like. Agents page looks like. Adapter page looks like. If you go back to the integration and let's see if it is activated or not, not now. Let this to be activated. Yeah, activate. And again, if you want to test, click on this action menu and click on run. When you run here, this will be open like we saw earlier as well. And from here, we can test our integration very quickly. Let it be. And now you can see the endpoint. This is your runtime endpoint using which you can test. Now you enter the name here. Let's say Anchor Chen, and then happen. Sorry. You let's say Anchor Chen and then click on a run. So when you run it, the integration will be kicked off and it will show you the response here. And you see earlier we used to have the instance ID in the numeric, but this has been changed to alpha numeric. This is how the activity stream looks like. You can click on the view icon. You can see the payload. You can download and you can also see the response headers if available. You can download it completely if you can expand it and you can test it more actually and this is the instance it so this is how you can quickly create an integration in integration 3. now let me go back and again you see the insights here model and dashboard and you see the observability that has been changed significantly earlier it is used to be a monitoring but now this has been changed from monitoring to observability click here and you see we have a dashboard you see how significantly the dashboard has been changed you can see here we have a zero error rate we have one active integration zero percent unavailable agent and design time you can see the instance status you can track your instances from here you can see the messages of last in the past four hours green shows the success this shows the total number of instances you can view of past month you can see past week you can see until now so you can refresh it and now you you click on those tiles and it will show you the information related to a particular time design time if you would like to give see the design time information and you would like to see the audit you can click on an audit here it will show you the number of adapters are there number of connections you have created number of integrations you have created you click on the adapter for example, this one, it will show you the number of integration by style, by adapter. You can also click on an audit. It will take you to the audit screen, which will show you the audit history. You can download it from here, download all and download filtered. So you see how significantly this has been changed. Let's go back. And here you can see insight for integration. We don't have any insight as of now. And you can click. Okay. Now again, go back to the integrations. It will show you all the integration we used to have this earlier as well. You click on this and this has been changed to instances and you can see everything here and click on this view icon to look at the activity stream. If any error occurred, you can see here and we used to have all those things earlier as well but you see how significantly the dashboard has been changed now you see 
to success, zero percent rate, total two instances, zero error. All are clickable. You click and it will filter the data for you. And now we have the settings. We have a certificate. We have a notification. We have a tracing. And okay, in the notification, we used to have four report earlier. Now we have a two reports, RD status and daily status. We do have a tracing here, integration level. We have a schedule. We have a file server. File server is not enabled. So it will show you it is not enabled. So this is how your home page of integration three looks like. And here you can see design two. And you can see the recent activity, what all you have done. So guys, I, so I hope you like this integration three. If you like this video, please like, comment and share and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel to get regular updates. You can follow me over LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest. Thank you guys. Bye-bye.